Be'ezras Hashem Yisborach Bruchim Haboyim Shem Hashem We begin the new Zman A new cycle of Shiurim For Kayetz Tov Shin Ayin Vov And In Yeshiva's Teferis Avigdor Bezrus Hashem Yisborach Nasa Ben Atzliach, and we should be Marbe Kivoyt Shemay. This week's parsha is Parshas Kedoshim. One of the psukim in Parshas Kedoshim is Loisamoid. Al dam reacha. Perik yutes posik yutzayin. Now the first question is how to teach this posik. What does it mean? Loy samoid. Don't stand. Al dam reacha on your brother's blood. So Rashi says. Loi Samoid means when you see your friend as when you see your friend's life in a sakona, don't stand by idly. Don't stand by without doing anything while your friend's blood is being spilt. The atoyochel and you're able to save him. Kigoin, for example, if you see somebody being toyveya benohor, drowning in a nohor, or vechaya, animals attacking somebody, or listim boimelov, or robbers coming upon him. Pasuk concludes by saying, Ani Hashem. Ni Hashem means, Rashi explains, I am Nemon Lishalim Sochar, someone who fulfills his responsibility to his fellow men. Hashem said, I will pay Schar, the Neman Li Pora. And someone who transgresses this obligation is Nemon Lihipora. Now in this Pasek, first you have to clarify what exactly is the Chiv. Someone might say, well, the Chiv is only if you see somebody drowning. And the second condition is you have to be able to save them. But let's say you don't see somebody drowning you don't have a responsibility to him. It means let's say you only hear about somebody who's in a pickle. And also you might think that this response, this chiyuv, this obligation is only in a situation where somebody is facing death. He's drowning. He's being attacked by a pit bull or robbers are attacking him, an Arab is attacking him, and you're able to run. I was reading about in Eretz Yisrael in the Sukkis, there was a fellow with his wife and kid walking in the old in Altstadt, and he was attacked by an Arab. And a fellow who lived there heard his screams, he took his gun, and he came running out. And the question was, I was reading, did the guy act wisely? Did he act wisely? He ended up getting killed himself, this fellow. Even though the Arab only had a knife and he had a gun. But his chiv was to, if you have a gun against a knife, 
heard that normally that's a situation where you could say, you're able to save the fellow. So you would think you have to go and save the fellow. But this love extends much further. In the Rambam, in Hilchis, Reitzeach, who shmiris hanefesh, Perak Aleph, Halacha Yudalid, says like this. Kol hayochel lahatzil, anyone who's able to save and does not save his fellow man, oiver aloi samoid al dam reyech. The chain haroya es chaveroi tevea benor, drowning in a nor, oi list in boyim alov, oi chayero bolov, and he's able to save him. Able to save means the follows. Either you yourself can save the fellow, or you can hire somebody else to save him. Hear that? You can hire somebody else to save him. The loy hits him, and you didn't save him. Oi, Sheshama, you heard, Goyim, Oi, Moisrim. Or snitchers. Michashvim a love raw, a thinking raw to do to another Jew. Oi toimnim loipach, or they're making for him a trap. The loigila oizen chaveiro ivahidiye, and you don't tell your friend that he's being set up, or others are considered, some goyim are planning bad things against you. Oi, or sheyoda begoy. You know about a certain goy. Oi baanos, or some strong man that has a taina on a friend of yours. He's upset at a friend of yours, and the yochel lefaisay. You're able to appease that goy or that strong man. And to take away from his heart. So you know a guy that's angry at a friend of yours. It says, you know that Jew? I hate that Jew. And you say, boy, what a chel Hashem. You know, my, he's your friend. Isn't he your friend? He says, yeah, he's my friend. But the guy says, you know, not every apple in the bunch is uh, great. And you're able to push it say something to get the fellow to ulahosir ma'ashe b'libay the loy faisa you don't get involved the chol kayoit say badvarim ha'ela and so too in anything similar to this ha'ay say some somebody who does these things oiver alav of lisamid al dam ha'reyach now this is the Rambam it says very clearly that it's not only if you know or see, if you just heard, even if you heard of people thinking about somebody wrong. So certainly, let's say you heard somebody's in danger. Here somebody is suffering, going through a very difficult situation. And you're able to reach out to the fellow. Here you hear about a fellow who passed, who, who died, who left this world young in Eretz Yisrael, and now his wife and children are left alone behind, and the situation, they're drowning. They're drowning if their life is about to fall apart, and you hear about it. You know what you say? I'm not rich. Sometimes you don't hear about it. But sometimes Hashem makes you hear about it. What's Hashem telling you to do? Extend yourself. You can help that person. Why don't you, why do you, you could talk to somebody. Why don't you go out of your way and try to raise some funds for him? So you're not the type? That's your chiv. What you're doing is you're standing idly by. Whatever the excuse is. I'm afraid. What are you afraid of? I told somebody, you think if you go raise funds for poor people, you think anybody's going to actually hit you? You think some guy's going to punch you in the nose? What's the worst thing that a guy will tell you? Since when did you get into the schnorr business? What the guy's going to tell you? I remember the first collection I made for somebody. First Shalom Aleichem I got was 
walking onto a porch for a fellow that was in a very bad situation and he had borrowed a large sum of money and told the fellow that I was going to pay it back <laughs> and put him in a very tough spot. That started, that began my career and I went on the Moitzai Shabbos and I arrived at a bungalow colony, the mountains, nice from bungalow colony and there was a porch, a large long porch, three ladies playing game on one side, the man with a safer on the other side, has been a little beard, like yarmulke, I said, I got the work, shalom aleichem. Guy looks at me and goes, oh no. <laughs> he knew I wasn't there to give him money. And I said, I'm here to raise some funds. He says, you know, you schnurs are worse than mosquitoes. <laughs> I said, in what way? <laughs> so he said, because mosquitoes, they have spray for. There's no schnurr spray. <laughs> and my ears turned red. And I said, this is my first knock on the door. This is my intro. And I said to the fellow, you know, I'm not really, it's not for me. I'm not collecting for me. I'm collecting for a poor person in its throw. The money not going to be. Is that I don't care whose pocket it ends up in, yours or the storekeeper's. <laughs> if your hand is out, you're the schnurr. And I said to the guy, an old lady's laughing, they thought it was very funny joke, his jokes, and he was enjoying his humorous moment. Miskabed the Kaloin Chaveroi, classic case. And I said, if you have a stone heart and you're a cheap Jew, just say that. And I won't bother you. You don't have to make fun of me. I turned around, I grabbed the door of the bungalow, I slammed it, I said, I want to give you a bracha. Go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked out with my brothers, I had a friend of mine, a brother of mine, and I said, I quit. <laughs> I quit this business. <laughs> I had better ways to spend my summer. But then I was walking back to my bungalow on the dark road, and I said to myself, isn't that amazing? The first Shalom Aleichem I get? The guy could have said, I'm sorry, I can't give you, I don't want to give you. Why did I have the first thing? I said, that's not a coincidence. I remember chapping. Hashem gave me the brains, the chap, that there wasn't a coincidence. I said, you know what? I'm not giving up. I'm going back. And then that began my career. <laughs> but you have to know, that's not wasn't a nice thing that I did. If you're able to be matzo, you have to do what you can do. You're mechoyev to do what you can do. Now, anybody who thinks that the reason why they're not helping is because they're not able, I'm going to give you a measuring stick that you should know how you can know if you're lying to yourself and you're being bamboozled by the Yetzir Hora, or how do you know whether you mean the Amis? How does a person know? The way to do it is, let's say a person could give a dollar. It doesn't give a dollar. That's a simile. It's <laughs> garnished. But it's much deeper than that. Because there is a way to help that everybody can help. And that is to be mispalel, to beseech HaKadosh Baruch Hu on behalf of that person. Get that? The Chazanish, in a letter of his, writes as follows. If it's not within your power to save somebody, and he doesn't stand in tefillah to save the person. This fellow is someone who's standing idly by and refusing to be matzel the guy. 
That's a minayabal hatsa. Hear that? Af sheyase hishtadlus lahatsola. Even if you make some type of hishtadlus lahatsola. That doesn't work. They can't help. You know why? Ki achare kosins she'ein be'ef sherusoy lahatsola. Since he doesn't have an ability to be matzel. Can't do it. Hare kol isukai vihishtad lusai. So what's he doing? He does something. You ever see a guy with a dog? There's a guy with a dog, and you're afraid of the dog also. You're afraid of the dog's gonna bite you, so you go, ha, 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 dog. No, 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 no. Well, that doesn't do nothing. What does that help? You know it's garnish, you understand? So it says, your ASIC is lame pinesha mekave lahatsim. You know, because this is no your dick. No your dick, he says. He says, if you see a guy being attacked by a dog, or you see a guy being held up by a schwarz, by an Arab, and you're watching from the window, and you know you can't do nothing. You're a weak old guy, you can't do nothing. There's nothing you can do. You don't have a knife, you don't have a gun, you don't have a stick. Nothing you can do. And you, and you, you stand by the window and go, ah, ah. And you go nuts. So you sound, wow. That guy's, I'm hoping to matzel. You're hoping you're, you're somehow, you hope to say. So the Chazanish, you have no hope to be matzel. You know that whatever you're doing is in vain and will not help the situation. So why do you do that? Know what he says? You're a Chachamim. You're not a baim. You're not a gold star, stone art fellow. And you see somebody never going down. But the ha mitzvah ha muteles alov, the mitzvah that's incumbent upon you, bisho she'ein o yochel lazor latzolo, the mitzvah that's incumbent upon you, when you're not able to help, he tefillah is tefillah. Yeah. This is in Chela Gimel. Letters seven Samach Gimel. Yeah, that unbelievable. Neuchdik. Neuchdik. Chazanish. And therefore, you have to ask yourself, somebody says to you, will you, will you raise funds for people of Mamish going down and out? Almana, Aysoyimim, person Nebuch, Tzabrochen, Pidyushvuyim, a guy got a guy got to start with, with the police. It was a fellow, I remember one of my heart went out for the fellow. A guy came to my house. It was a Rashkail, his son in law, it was a Yosem. And in his chasana, he undertook to pay his half. Married this girl, Rashkail's daughter. He said he'll pay his half for his family. A couple years went by, and he borrowed money, he couldn't pay it back. So he went to London to become a Rebbe. And he was hoping through his money he's going to earn in London, he's going to be pay back his funds. The problem that he had was that he didn't have a passport, didn't have a visa, so he borrowed somebody's passport. And he went to London and everything went fine. And the one time he came back, was time coming back to Pesach to his family, Erev Pesach, and the lady in the, those little Butkalach in the airport where they look up the dark on him, looked at him, and they look at the password to look at him, and you know, to an English guy, all you didn't look the same. Like all Schwarzers look the same. <laughs> so you figured all oh, you didn't look the same. But uh, Yid, she said, Is this you? He said, Yes, it's me. He said, Like this, if you don't tell me the truth, I'm taking you in, you're going to get interrogated, you're not going to see Pesach. If you tell me the truth, you'll be on for Pesach. He said, it's not me. They arrested the guy, they put him in jail, and the guy went through Yisuri Gehenim, Mama Shiva Maduri Gehenim. Kilo, the guy was the biggest spy, like he was Mama's Jonathan Pollard. Nebuchadnezzar for years, and the Shver came, Nebuchadnezzar, Ratav and Mois from the jail, and helped Beis Chayv, oh, Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, such a thing. Again, I'm for the guy. So, 
can't help raise funds for a guy like that. Why not? Why can't they help raise funds? The Briskarov used to say as follows. He said, many times people ask you about somebody who's sick. A chayla, who needs racha me shemai. And the common is, you ask people, how's he doing, how's he doing? And you say, the matzah have got a little bit. The matzah have got better. He says, be careful that you should not place yourself into the gather of a roided chas v'shal. You can, by saying that, if that causes the person not to daven from anymore, if it causes the other person not to beseech Hashem for that person's behalf, because you heard the guy's doing a little bit better. Yeah? And he explained the tefillahs that a person davens for a sick person is the best refuah possible. But the derech of the world is that when they hear that the mats have got better, and when they hear that it's gate it's, 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 it's of a vague. Do you know what happens? The person either limits, minimizes his davening, or he stops davening. So it's poshit like you're taking from the person the refua that is most beneficial. And you nichnes chas for shalom beget the right of. Hear that, mamish bernay di kazar. Hear that. That's a tviya. Person has a tviya in you. You have a chiv to be mad to somebody. Shach was one sick. He told said he told people who came into him, "You should know I have a bilus on you." He said, "I have a bilus on you." What's the bilus? He said, "I'm able to be tevei you, to be daven for me. And if not, you withholding from me something that shaykh to me. Yeah, believe it. it's nerdic." person has to realize this. This tells us a chiyuv, our chiyuv. You ever see a person who doesn't have children? He's an ice mensch. You ever see a person who doesn't have a shidduch? He's an ice mensch. Your life fall apart. You didn't die for them. Nope. That is interesting. It's also in the end to this parasha, but it's a child in the poiskim, whether, let's say a person is doing an Aveira, and you're able to be matzlim from doing an Aveira, and you're not matzlim. Are you overly samad al So that could be is different. It's a shayla. In the Chavetz Chaim, it seems it's, the elder wasn't. You know what goes over there? You put yourself into that matzlim. That's called like an Aveda Midas. That's not like Samad Adam Reach. Samad Adam Reach is when you hear somebody's being accosted and he didn't do it willingly and put himself in that situation. So then, but you know what the situation is, applies very stark? Let's say you happen to meet somebody who by no choice of his own was brought up in a non-observant family. And he grew up without yadus. And you're able to be matzal. Tell you a story. I, mean, I was young, when I was young, with young children, we lived in the same house with my Zayda. He lived downstairs. My Zayda lived upstairs. And one night there was a knock on the door. I was definitely sleeping. My memory tells me that everybody was sleeping in the house. It was the middle of the night, and my Zayda came down to the door, and then we were told that the neighbor next door, a fryid, 
was dying and his wife wanted somebody should come in to say the last rites. Problem was my grandfather was a coyote. Not allowed to be in the house together with somebody like that. So he knocked on my father's door and he woke him up and he told him to go over there quickly and and my grandfather said to my father a very interesting thing. He didn't say, say Shema with him. He didn't say, say Tillim. You know what he said? See to it that he has a regret of how he lived his life. See to it that he has a hero tshuva. If you can get somebody to have a hero tshuva, that's a tremendous accomplishment. Understand? So that's for sure, just like you can't stand idly by if a person loses an Aveda, you're mechiv to return an Aveda of a person, so most certainly, if you're in a situation, you're facing a situation where you're able to reach somebody. Many times I've asked, some, I've asked people who I meet, since I heard that story, I, when I meet somebody who's not from, I say to them, aren't you sorry that you didn't live an observant life, a rich, beautiful, family, observant life? But first you point out, you ask them some questions about themselves. Are you married? Half of them will tell you they're not married. And you'll tell them, you have children, do you have nachas on your children? Half of them tell you they don't have the opportunity, you know what? You know, I come from a family of 10. Baruch Hashem, Hashem blessed me 12. I said, you know, I said, that's a family. I said, that's a traditional, that's if you live an observant life. How do you do it, Rabbi? How do you do it? You do it because if you follow the Torah, then you can do it. I say to the person, do you understand? Don't you, aren't you sorry you never had the opportunity to live such a life? And sometimes people tell me, no, I'm not sorry. <laughs> okay, that guy's a rush, so what can I do? But my, my job is to try to be matzo that person. You get a person to say, I'm sorry for the way I live my life. You've accomplished a tremendous amount. And that's what a person has to know is part of Lysamu del Damriyach. Now, our role as B'nai Torah puts us more in that forefront. People who learned in the yeshiva, as opposed to people who are observant who never learned in the yeshiva, so they know very minimal. They know very little. But people in, who learned in yeshivas, or are learning in yeshivas, are definitely ambassadors of the Torah. And as such, you have to know that you have a responsibility wherever you are not to schmooze somebody up, not to try to kitzel them. That's what people like to do, if, if anything. If you, if you have nothing to do with your time, so you just kitzel the guy, you make jokes with the guy, and that's all. But to reach out, to be matzel somebody is a much greater opportunity. If a person does that, and he's Mekayim the mitzvah of his Lisamra Damriyach. So the next time you hear that somebody is not well, you undertake to daven for that person. Especially if the person is a Talmud Chacham, the Mineya, the Mari says a person should get sick over a Talmud Chacham that's not well, who needs a Rafua, who needs a Yeshua. This is our responsibility. It's not a nice thing. It's a chiyuv. Let us consider this. Let us make ourselves aware of this. And let us fulfill this mitzvah.